So the old town of Silver City is really cool. It's very bohemian, very artsy, lots of small restaurants. Apparently the, the town is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 1.15 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. <laughs> um, if you miss that time frame, then you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> so definitely everything's closed on Mondays. It appears that some things are also closed on Tuesdays. Oh yeah, and some things are closed on Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays. You can always call and make an appointment. Call and make an appointment. So it's really pretty to look at from outside. Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Today we're in Silver City, New Mexico, and we're about to check out the old town. This city began in the 1880s with the discovery of silver, and it's also the childhood home of Billy the Kid. So we'll check that out too. Silver City is the oldest unincorporated town in New Mexico, and the only one still operating under a territorial charter, which it was granted back in 1878. In 1870, American prospectors from all over began staking claims after discovering silver. This area just east of the Continental Divide was soon dubbed Silver City and the rush began. In 1875, just five years later, Silver City was producing $16,000 of silver bullion a week. It also became the hub for providing all the supplies needed for this booming town. Quickly, businesses grew along the town's main street to be the supply center for this growing industry. In 1882, Orange Scott and Elizabeth Warren settled in Silver City with their three children. O.S. Warren, an insurance and real estate agent, sadly died three years later in 1885, just as the family's two-story brick house was completed on the corner of Market and Main Street. Elizabeth stepped up and took over her husband's business, which she ran from an office in her home. She was the first woman in New Mexico Territory to become a general insurance agent and a notary public. Soon she represented more insurance companies than anyone in the Southwest. Silver City is located at the bottom of a geographical bowl. Its main street was the exact path that the watershed from the Pinos Altos Mountains and the Continental Divide drained through. In July of 1895, a wall of water 12 feet high and 300 feet wide poured down into the town, destroying much of the businesses on Main Street and creating an arroyo. Another huge flood about seven years later roared through the center of town and what was left of Main Street sunk even further to 50 feet below the original street level. The ever resourceful Elizabeth was able to organize a workforce to pile hundreds of sandbags at the base of her home saving it from devastation. Next she engaged her work crews to construct stone retaining walls along the banks of what's now known as the Big Ditch. Today you can see this beautiful home still overlooking the Big Ditch, which is now a park 55 feet below the rest of the town where the San Vicente Creek flows by the walkways and trees and colorful art telling the story of the flood. Silver City is a town that didn't quit. They simply moved the town center over and Bullard Street became the center of the business district. The Big Ditch has become one of the most storied parks in the West. It seems that anywhere you travel in southern New Mexico, you will hear stories of Billy the Kid. Although he was born in New York, his family moved to this rich mining area in the 1870s. After building a log cabin for the family, his stepfather was mostly away searching for gold and silver. Sadly, this young boy's mother died of tuberculosis soon after. Then the family's cabin was severely damaged in the big floods and was torn down. This replica was built on the original home site as a gift from movie producer and director Ron Howard. 
It was part of the set of his 2003 movie, The Missing. There are different stories of how Billy the Kid became the infamous outlaw. He certainly had a horrible childhood, having to fend for himself at a very young age. His short life was filled with obstacles and dead ends. After a series of fires, in 1880 Silver City established a fire ordinance prohibiting wood frame construction and mandating brick structures going forward. This may be what saved it from becoming a typical western ghost town as the mining industries boomed and busted over the next hundred years. It's also why we can now stroll through the old town and be transported back in time. The history of many of the buildings that today house a variety of businesses is told on plaques out front of each. If you're a fan of 1930s Art Deco architecture, then the Murray Hotel will catch your eye as it did ours. When it opened in 1938, the Murray Hotel immediately became known as the standard for Art Deco luxury and elegance in the Southwest. Built by local entrepreneur W.D. Murray, the hotel had three retail stores, a restaurant, a coffee shop, a bar, and a stately lobby. Since people kept coming to Silver City, the hotel quickly expanded. By 1949, the five-story building had 100 rooms. The ballroom addition featured a spring-suspended maple floor, so it didn't hurt your feet when you danced on it. Well into the 1950s, it was the place for events and meetings, but soon after it struggled and closed in the 1990s. It was purchased in 2005. Restorations began to return it to its original Art Deco, streamlined modern majesty. They retained as many historical features as possible. It reopened in 2012 with 53 restored guest rooms and suites. They now host guests from all around the world, and it's once again a hub for meetings and gatherings. Located in the heart of downtown Silver City, the Murray Hotel is within walking distance of numerous shops, local art galleries, and restaurants. This photo of Martha Ryan, granddaughter of owner W.D. Murray, in the hotel lobby just before its grand opening really caught our attention when we went inside. Since most all the shops were closed when we visited, not because of COVID, but apparently just because they aren't open all the time, we weren't able to do much supporting of the local economy. Silver City's retail district schedules seem a little quirky, but quirkiness can be a good thing. Next time, and there definitely will be a next time, we'll plan to be there when the shops are all open. Looking through the windows was fun, and we would love to see more. However, the two bike shops we encountered were open and proud of it. This one even having a bit of fun about it with a sign on their door. It's obvious that Silver City loves its color-filled artfulness as much as its history, and it is rich in both not just in the business district, but also in the surrounding residential neighborhoods. Silver City is home to more than 50 murals, many of which were completed by the Members Region Arts Council's Youth Mural Project, which pairs at-risk kids with artists as well as helping children connect with their community. We encountered a few of these as we explored. It's been named in the best 100 art towns in America. It's obvious that this is a mecca for artists to live and work. It's also one of the first New Mexico towns to be designated as an arts and cultural district, which provides opportunities to be part of a larger effort to promote the diverse culture and heritage of the Southwestern United States.
If the history, the art, and the stubborn quirkiness of Silver City isn't enough to bring you here to see it for yourself, it's also a hub for exploring the surrounding Gila forest area. There you'll find Gila Cliff Dwellings National Monument, hot springs you can soak in, lakes you can fish in or camp by, all of which we explored in our last episode. There's a link in the description below. On average, the sun shines more than 300 days per year, and there are at least 174 growing days. We certainly will return, preferably when the shops are open to experience more of what Silver City has to offer. If you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie, we invite you to support this channel by using the links found in the description below. It won't cost you anything more, and we sometimes receive a small commission. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell so we'll notify you when we upload the next video. We also enjoy getting to know you through your comments. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya. Whoa.